Hello community, so great that you are back. Today, today a very special edition because we have today AI Research, a German edition. And just to make it clear, this is a snapshot, a snapshot of time for today. So all everything that was published yesterday on May 19, 2025, I or my AI bots found more than 1,482 AI research paper published or preprint or whatever on the internet. I had applied my filters and I read more than 400 plus titles and scientific abstracts from topics I found interesting in my area of research. And I noticed something. There is today an amazing amount of new AI research publications from Germany. And I think this is great that in Europe, AI research is really now massive approaching here, publication, preprint, whatever. So let's have a look. If you are in the US, if you are in China, if you are in Southeast Asia, if you are in Australia, somewhere, if you are in Antarctica, I just want to give you a feeling that in Germany, in Europe, we have now more and more also AI research, and I think it's beautiful, it's fascinating. So I just want to give you a feeling here. First one is here, chain of thought kinetics, a theoretical model assessing here the large reasoning model, the reasoning process, and they established a kinetics energy equation for the reasoning process. It's just beautiful. So you have a particle kinetics dynamic governed by a mechanical field, and you have this here, the Ludwig Maximilian University of Munich, the Munich Research Center with Huawei Technology, the Munich Center of Machine Learning, and the School of Computer Science in Wuhan, Wuhan University. Great. Also, we have here by Infa in Leipzig and Chemnitz uh, University of Technology in Leipzig University and Kaiserslautern. Hello, Kaiserslautern. Yes, we have a new benchmark, and this is about a large language model and a knowledge graph benchmark. And they say which LLM is offering here the best capabilities in the field of semantic web and knowledge graph engineering. What a beautiful study. We go on and we have here Mercedes-Benz, AG, of course, a German Mercedes-Benz. And they have here the development and the evolution of a cognitive AI memory framework. So they go here with agent, the memory framework for the long-term interaction with intelligent agents. Of course, they had developed here three modules, the memory control as a central decision unit, the memory retrieval, which filters here the relevant information from the interaction data and then the post thinking, which maintains here the memory storage and clears the memory storage. But we go on and we have here the Technical University of Munich and Technical University of Munich and they have here a language model that walk to talk for formal fairness certificates. And this is interesting because they want to have here on the internet or news or wherever you are, a toxicity detection, offering here kind of a formal guarantee that adversarially manipulated toxic input are consistently detected and appropriately censored. Interesting field of study. Then we have here Helmholtz Center for Information Security in Germany, the interactional fairness. So you see, this is now seems to be a real uh, a focal point here on multi-agent system and evaluation framework. And they introduce a new world framework for evaluating interactional fairness, encompassing here the interpersonal fairness and the informational fairness in LLM-based multi-agent system. Quite an interesting topic. I've not seen this with fairness in the American literature, for example. Well, here we have Theo Darmstadt. Hey, Darmstadt! Oh my goodness, 20 years ago in Darmstadt. The Computer Science Department and the Hessian Center for Artificial Intelligence, Darmstadt, and German Research Center for Artificial Intelligence, Darmstadt, beautiful. And they say, hey, how can we enable reinforcement learning agents to have similar human priors here, allowing here the agent to learn with fewer training interaction reinforcement learning, and they develop Dylan. But of course, here to uh, mimic here, you immediately see what we are talking about in-hand manipulation via scoring with a reinforcement learning critique model, interesting for robotics, or we go here with Heidelberg University, Mannheim, Germany, and they have here a zero-shot inference of dynamical system preserving the long-term statistics. So this is an interesting interplay here, no? with a mixture of expert architecture pre-trained for a dynamical system reconstruction. So if you are here into timelines, this is it. Plus, a new research here by Bielefeld University. Hello, Bielefeld. And we have here the question whether the algorithms, the machine learning algorithms are fair 
in an ever-increasing importance to our society. So interesting referencing here to the European Union AI Act. So there's a lot of research how to implement this and what about fairness? We go on, we have here Bielefeld University again, beautiful May 20, 2025, today, as you see, and they go about building and utilizing dynamic partner models for an adaptive explanation generation. And you see we're working here with our colleagues in the social cognitive systems, constructing explainability. This is interesting. So you see, sometimes difficult points on a particular day are really not where we have the U.S. American uh, focal points or the development points where China has here its focus. Interesting. Talking about specific German focal points. What about a modern G-Bird, a German only 1 billion free trainable parameter encoder model trained from scratch? This is great. I think every nation should have its own uh, language model in its own native language. Or if you have multiple languages, at least one of your dominant languages. I don't think that everything should be done in English. So great if you have a diversification, if you go in your mother tongue, in your national primary language, and you develop AI in your for your society in your language, modern bird. Yeah, they don't go with the classical bird system. They have in this in the innovation of the modern bird system. And if you want, yes, of course, I have a video on modern bird. Then we have here where we are, Max Planck, of course, Stuttgart Center for Simulation Science, Simulation Science, Simulation of Science, okay, University of Stuttgart, and they have here continuous and adaptive convolution for latent space modeling of time-dependent partial differential equations. Real nice, really interesting, you know exactly what we're talking if we're talking about Stuttgart. And they say, hey, we introduce a novel, continuous, convolution-based encoder-decoder architecture. So like a T5 that you know from five years ago, that uses here an epsilon neighborhood constraint kernel and learns to apply the convolution operator to adaptive and optimized query points. Real interested if you are into the optimization of partial differential equation and their applications. Really interesting is here, Technical University of Munich, yes, and University of Rome. This is beautiful. The title is To Bias or Not To Bias, detecting bias here in news, news publication articles, whatever, TV news, with a bias detector. So there's a lot of focal point here on fair reporting that every society group is really also here, have access is here represented in a fair and open way. And also they want to detect if there are any biases from any group in any particular online publication can we detect the bias and this is nice and they perform here and this is so beautiful because they go back to the roots no remember bird and sentence bird so they tell us here in their latest publication we perform a sentence level bias classification by fine-tuning a roberta based model my goodness I, last time i worked with roberta was about three years ago on an expert annotated a babe data set oh this sounds interesting so you see they care a lot about the media bias that might encounter you if you are looking here in the internet or whatever, in TV or whatever you go. They say, hey, we want to make sure everybody has here access to the real truth. Here we go on. And I think this is for the last one. Karlsruhe Institute of Technology. Kit, beautiful. And they go here in this particular publication. And please, this is only a snapshot of one day. And there are more than 1,000 papers that AI filtered out because it's not in my area of expertise. And they say, hey, we are here doing the research on a pipeline that employs multiple automatic speech recognition systems whose outputs are then fused with a large language model with document level context. And this is followed up by a two-step translation process, incorporating now additional refinement steps to improve the translation quality by simply providing here additional context here to this translation exercise. Really interesting. KIT, one of the beautiful institutions in Germany. And I think this is it. <laughs> it just out of scope. This is just here an impulsive uh, video generation. I just wanted to show you if you are searching for partners, if you want to find here people that are also working in your particular field of AI, I thought, hey, today was so such a strong signal here 
in the publication of AI research, German researchers, German institutions are now really a strong force here, especially, I think, in Europe. Maybe I will do one of my next videos here on France and Frankreich. And I've seen also in Scandinavia, there are some real interesting research group emerging now. Of course, it is not about the institution, but it is about the human, the, the people, the highly, I don't know, educated talents that we have. And wherever there are, if you want to go, I don't know, for one or two years, somewhere in Southeast Asia, or if you want to change here, or if you come from the US to Europe. Just want to give you here a feeling about what are here today, just in one day in this snapshot, the research areas where people do AI research, where they published, where they're interested in developing those system. And yeah, this was just here for my friends in Germany. I think it is absolutely beautiful to have such a strong signal of artificial intelligence here today in the heart of Europe. And yeah, if you're interested in this, hey, why not subscribe? And I'll see you in one of my next videos.